Well, it looks like the peak is still not in for NVIDIA. In fact, my expectation was that NVIDIA was going to beat today, but I didn't think their guide would be as delicious and scrumptious as it actually was. Wall Street was looking for 20.4 billion, NVIDIA guided 20 billion, they usually beat. I was looking for up to about 20 and a half billion, we actually got 22.1 billion of revenue with a guide of 24 billion. Now that's exciting because it shows us about maybe an 8.6% growth quarter over quarter. And if we adjust that by how much they usually beat by, Nvidia is actually telling us that they haven't hit peak yet. Now, how we do that is really important. And we're gonna go through notes from the earnings call and from the earnings report and everything. But most importantly, I want you to look right here. This right here, this little scribbling of notes in this segment right here shows you that revenue has gone from 34% growth from Q2 to Q3 to 22% growth from Q3 uh, uh, to, uh, to, to Q4. Uh, and now, we're looking forward probably to about 19% growth in the next quarter. That is still really good. I was worried, and that's adjusted by how much they're probably gonna beat by in the next quarter and what they hinted in their earnings call. I'll explain the earnings call hint in just a moment, but that's good. It suggests we're still seeing that quarter over quarter growth. The AI excitement isn't gone yet. And margin is actually increasing, increasing to 76 0.7% on a gross margin basis, on a gross profit basis, that's incredible. Now, guess what they hinted at when the peak might hit? Q4 and Q1 are expected to retain these sort of margins that we've seen, but Q2 and the rest of 2024 is expected to see margin return to the mid 70s. That would be your 74 to 75 ish, maybe 76 range down from about that 77% where we are now. That's a sign that they're expecting margins to finally start coming down when they guide for Q2, which mean, means if we're looking for a peak, we might still be a quarter too early. Now keep in mind, we know that AI has been transformative, but we know at some point the growth rate will slow. It looks like it's not this Q4, maybe it'll be Q1. Why? Because supply is finally catching up and we expect to be balanced with supply and demand in 2025. So that does mean you're still supply constrained for 2024 and you probably have tailwinds and probably not really any kind of earnings misses for much of 2024 as you are still supply constrained. Maybe you start getting that weaker growth forecasting though quarter over quarter starting in Q2 and maybe you start looking at misses in 2025. But that does mean you've probably got some real insulation investing in NVIDIA stock still longer than expected. This is better than expected. Uh, now, some of the things that we heard about on their earnings call, they talked about how 40% of their data center revenue was driven by AI. This is phenomenal. Now, we have seen data center revenue double, so it kind of makes sense that half of the data center revenue is the old and approximately half is the new. So maybe not that big of a deal. Of course, we got a lot of excitement from Jensen about how this is the next industrial revolution for biotech, for cloud service providers, for automotive, for a vehicle. In fact, there was even a hint that NVIDIA's Thor platform, which might be released next year, would actually help other vehicle platforms introduce self-driving technologies, somewhat maybe the likes of which Tesla has, for other manufacturers that expected to be released next year and probably a competitor to Tesla to some extent. Of course, the extent that that NVIDIA Thor product will be competitive to Tesla, we'll have to see in TBD. The point is, Vidi is very, very excited about the future, not just from uh, bio and uh, pre basically making uh, drug discovery AI models, giving those to pharmaceuticals and going here. Here's an AI model you could use for your pharma uh, to come up with new drugs. Here's an AI model you can use in your robotics. Here are AI models you can use in your uh, self driving endeavors. 
NVIDIA is basically trying to build out the models for companies so they basically have a ready to use artificial intelligence product. And what they're doing is they're saying, look, you don't even need to buy the chip yourself. You could rent it for $4,500 a year if you want, but why don't you just partner with Google or Microsoft or Meta and use their, or Amazon for that matter, and use their built out data centers to utilize our chips, our technology, our code, our CUDA network through those cloud service providers. This is where Jensen was really suggesting the customers of NVIDIA are not just getting the product, but they're also getting customers because NVIDIA is kind of like, oh, okay, well, we sold all these chips to Google. Oh, okay, you're, you're a pharmaceutical, you wanna use AI? Here, let's hook you up with Google. <laughs> so kind of interesting. And they're prioritizing their supply based on how quickly these data centers can actually deploy the chips, which is fantastic because what you don't want are, uh, well, it's basically NVIDIA supplying a bunch of these expensive chips and then these 35,000 piece H100s that weigh 70 pounds sitting in a corner somewhere collecting dust. You don't want that. Uh, I did think th there was one underwhelming reference they gave. They said a American Express improved fraud detection by 6% using AI. And I'm like, that's not that huge. I, I mean, maybe, you know, in the grand scheme of things, uh, when it comes to in, uh, like uh, American Express's actual like losses or prevented losses, that's great. I mean, it's money, right? It makes sense for the investment, but you know, I'm looking for a little bit more than 6%. I've always kind of thought AI sort of helped me be maybe 10 to 15% more productive. I have a whole course on how, how, how I do that. Well, it's in the productivity course. It's just a small segment of that. But I personally think that 6% reference, I mean, unless I misheard it and it was 60%, I don't think I did, but 6% seemed like a little bit of a low reference. Uh, there's also this talk about uh, uh, Spectrum X, and this is basically NVIDIA's way of saying, look, we think if you're going to build out a data center, you should use InfiniBand. That's our technology. That's the best wiring system we can give you. But if you're really stuck on using Ethernet, which is where you have competition coming in, AMD is partnering with Cisco and Broadcom to really build out what they call the ultimate uh, ethe uh, Ethereum, Ethernet system, okay? Ultimate Ethernet. Uh, tongue twisted on the, all these words here. Ultimate Ethernet is supposed to be a competitor to InfiniBand, okay? That's, again, the consortium between Cisco, AMD, and Broadcom. They're doing Ultimate Ethernet. NVIDIA's like, we do InfiniBand, but now NVIDIA is also like, but if you really want to stick to using Ethernet, well, then you could use Spectrum X. That's our Ethernet version for you and and the best product we can give you via NVIDIA. I think that's very interesting. Uh, they're really trying to make sure they can t sell you a chip no matter what system you're on or wiring infrastructure you're on. Remember, once a data center is built, uh, which is very expensive to build, you, you wanna keep using those products. Speaking of building data centers, Super Microcomputer announced a $1.9 billion convertible offering that did leave, uh, lead their stock to drop a little bit there in the post market. It is still up about 7%, following NVIDIA's about 7% rise. We'll see how robust this is. It's been very, very stuck. And uh, uh, at that 731 level, it keeps getting rejected by 731. Did briefly try to break out, couldn't hold it. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow we'll actually get a full breakout here. Who knows? But I have to say, I don't think there was anything massively exciting in this earnings report other than the fact that the growth rate is continuing and they expect to be supply constrained throughout the rest of the year. Supply is improving. Now, this is where things get really problematic long-term for some of these AI stock valuations. And I wanna be crystal clear here. I have a lot of allocation to NVIDIA, TSM, these, these AI companies. I did trim a little bit before earnings, so I have to say, eh, you know, okay, maybe I could have trimmed after, but oh well, right? A little fluctuation here or there. There's nothing you can do about that. I just want to be transparent about my positioning. My positioning is that over time, as this year progresses and as we get to 2025, it's probably going to make sense to continue to trim a little bit more and start thinking about where's that next segment. Obviously, I've been of this mindset that the next segment is where interest rates give you tailwinds. And so I wanna trim from chips and move into where interest rates give me tailwinds, which are going to be ASICs for solar, and face uh, Tesla, you know, those interest rate sensitives. Uh, that is that is sort of a play that I'm looking at because I, I think that's the next move. Mostly because when that growth cycle does slow, 
we're not going to see those EPS beats anymore and those peg ratios are going to start looking a little expensive, especially for something like Super Microcomputer. They're setting very, very strong comps for the end of 2023 and the beginning of 2024. Those are going to be very tough comps to beat. And remember, the big thing to keep in mind for NVIDIA buildouts or server buildouts is you might have gone from no build out to build out. But the question is, what happens once you're built out? Well, are you upgrading to the H200 or the B100? Maybe, maybe not. We did get asked about cycle refresh, but Jensen punted on that. And that's why I'm specifically mentioning this. Kind of punted on this. I was looking at, you know, we did also hear a little bit about uh, a, a new product reset for China, uh, which, so in addition to this sort of punt on, hey, are people going to actually keep upgrading? Yes, we know they are sold out basically for their H200s. They say that demand exceeds supply for those. Of course, if you're buying, if you're still building a new infrastructure set, of course, you're going to get the latest stuff. The question is for somebody who already built out to H100, are they going to upgrade to the next cycle? Probably not because the margins are so high. That's why NVIDIA themselves warn that margins are probably going to peak Q1. They said that, not me. They said margins will probably peak Q1. Uh, and these Q1, Q4 margins uh, that we've had will probably be uh, their top. Uh, now, uh, regarding China, I was going to say they uh, are creating a new product offering for China and they're testing that out. They don't seem very confident in China. They're kind of guiding the same single digits increase for uh, uh, product revenue from China. Obviously, most revenues here are coming directly from AI in America through the cloud service providers and, of course, abroad for any cloud service providers building out infrastructure in other countries. Your Google, your Amazon, your Meta, they don't necessarily have to build the factories infrastructure here. They can build that in other areas uh, throughout the world as well. So I, uh, those are probably my biggest takeaways. And I really want to hone in where I think they matter the most. Peak Q1 margin. I think that matters a lot. And that growth rate, they impressed me. I will give you that. I know this is chicken scratch right here, but I was expecting 34 to go to 22 to go to 10. And my adjusted forecast, based on how much I think they're going to beat in the next quarter, about 15 to 18%. So I take their 8.6% and then I adjust it and then I divide. This, this quarter over quarter sequential growth, it's still going to be strong between Q4 to Q1. But the guide from Q1 to Q2 is probably going to be really interesting. Maybe that's when we get to the 10%. So we're still in a really good place for NVIDIA. I don't know if this is enough to get us to break out over 730. It is entirely possible that this stock could trade sideways. I personally, I, I've said it, I said it, uh, you know, last year, about 10 months ago. I have said it five days ago. I think this is a six to $700 stock. I personally did not see anything in these earnings that say this is a $1,000 stock. I, I'm not, I, I don't want to poo-poo anybody's holdings on NVIDIA. I, again, I hold a lot of NVIDIA too, okay? Like, I'm, I'm a big NVIDIA shareholder. I'm just, after this earnings call, I'm kind of, I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is impressive. This is good. This is great. We love this. This is all the same stuff we've been hearing, and they're doing great. Their cash flow generation is phenomenal. They've got twice the cash on hand that they had last year. Uh, I mean, they 5X their infinite band deployments. I mean, this is this company is not going anywhere. I, I could not, I can't bet against NVIDIA. But, do, you know, do I, what, where, where am I going to get my next double, right? Am I going to get my next double on NVIDIA or, or something else? I think it's more likely to be something else. Yeah, you know, is there maybe a, like, do I think we can get from 731 to 930 or the 969? I don't think with these earnings, we're going to get that. It's my opinion. I could be wrong, not personalized financial advice, but 969 on the FIB retracement here divided by 731, a 32% move. Mm, I don't think so this year. Uh, I could be wrong. And I wouldn't be surprised if we get some bobbing around here. But I personally think it's actually more likely you end up back, you know, potentially in no man's land here uh, than, than, than you end up getting up to a, uh, a 969. And that's why I think sideways teetering is probably most likely here. No guarantees. Now, uh, where I do think there will be some really interesting, well, and then of course I'm afraid of SMCI. Uh, but where I do think there is an interesting opportunity 
And, and this is a little special bonus for the people who made it this far in the video, okay? There's this company that was mentioned, and I had, this is just a secret between you and me, okay? Uh, they mentioned a company that I had not even freaking paid attention to uh, at all, at all. Uh, this is a company that is trading for 12 times earnings. It is a company that is forecasting a growth rate of about, uh, let's see here, I'll tell you, for the next year, 6.4 plus 9, 5, 6, 8, 9, 29.9 divided by 4. Company forecasting a 7.5 growth rate uh, over the next year, each year, 7.5. That's a peg ratio of 1.6. So I got a company here, and NVIDIA mentioned them as a partner. Uh, uh, it is a company that uh, everybody's heard of before. I'm going to one of their last filings here because I want to pull this up. I'm doing it live, baby. Uh, and I don't invest in them, but I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's something that I wasn't even expecting to be interested in. But if I go to segments on this next company, I'm expecting to see something interesting. Reportable segments. Here we go. Uh, infrastructure Solutions Group. Okay, so they've got an Infrastructure Solutions Group. They're actually negative year over year in Infrastructure Solutions. Uh, so I don't know if the world realizes that they do this infrastructure yet. So I can't make a bet at this point without further research that this is where to go. And so I will say there's servers and networking, to be clear. There's servers and networking segment is negative year over year november 3rd 4656 that's uh 4.6 billion 4656 divided by 5200 they're negative about 10.5 percent on servers but nvidia shouted out dell they shouted out dell uh as a networking partner and i just think to myself hmm one six peg are we blind to potentially what dell is partnering with nvidia on here I don't know. I don't know enough about it. NVIDIA is not mentioned once in their last 10Q, not a single time. Uh, I can go jump to their annual report just to see if they've ever been mentioned over there. The last annual report, though, was March 30th for Dell. Uh, so, and NVIDIA is not mentioned once. You can do a quick NVIDIA Dell Google here. And, you know, there's there's talk about Project Helix and some generative AI partnerships from back in May. But not a lot of recent information there. But I think there's something there to pay attention to. Uh, and maybe there's a value play there. I would certainly, let me just put it this way, be more enthused at, at this juncture in, I hate to say it, but Dell than Super Microcomputer because they both supply uh, server infrastructure. That's an initial reaction. It's just the thought. It's something I heard that I don't think anybody else is really paying attention to. So it's just something that uh, I, I think is worth uh, highlighting, this, this uh, shout out. They mentioned them in the same vein as their partners when they were mentioning super microcomputers. So something to pay attention to. So again, uh, do I think there are going to be better opportunities going forward in terms of growth out there? Absolutely. Am I going to, you know, do, do I really think it's necessary to dump all my NVIDIA because it's going to come crashing and burning intensely? No. Peak probably Q1 on margin. Growth rates will continue to decline on the month over month basis. The supply will meet demand more clearly in 2025. Now that's where we're going to probably see massive chip deflation. And you're going to have to be a little careful because in 2025, I want you to think about what's going to happen in 2025. That's where I get a little more nervous, okay? In 2020, and the stock market can sometimes try to price this stuff in, but what do you get in 2025? You're going to get this triangle of slower uh, uh, growth. So slower growth, right? And then high comps, right? Slower growth, high comps. Those are about the same. Uh, then you're going to get, uh, you're going to be past peak uh, margin. So I guess I should call that uh, supply balance, you know, so we'll call this an increase of supply. Uh, and then you're going to get competition. Now I know when people hear competition with NVIDIA, they're like, there is no competition, Kevin. Uh, what do you think in like companies like AMD, Sam Altman trying to create a chip designing company, Every chip designing company out there or startup is trying to do. They're trying to build the next H100. I, I know it might seem far-fetched, but 
Competition will come. So you, in 2025, you're going to have this trifecta of a problem for NVIDIA. And so I think that's going to put a damper on how much this sucker can continue to rally because the stock market will need to start considering the trifecta of more supply, peak margin, competition, slower growth and high comps going into 2025. My take on NVIDIA, great job. They did a fantastic job. I love what they did. I just don't think it's breakout worthy. If you like this, you can see a full summary over at ehack.com, full house hack update on the House Hack Homes uh, YouTube channel for my real estate startup. It's not a chip startup, I know. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really- Why not advertise these things that you told us here? I feel like nobody else knows about this. We'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. Congratulations, man. You have done so much. People love you. People look up to you. Kevin Pafrath there, financial analyst and YouTuber. Meet Kevin. Always great to get your take. Even though I'm a licensed financial advisor, real estate broker, and becoming a stockbroker, this video is neither personalized financial advice nor real estate advice for you. It is not tax, legal, or otherwise personalized advice tailored to you. This video provides generalized perspective, information, and commentary. Any third-party content I show should not be deemed endorsed by me. This video is not and shall never be deemed reasonably sufficient information for the purpose of evaluating a security or investment decision. Any links or promoted products are either paid affiliations or products or services which we may benefit from. I personally operate and actively manage ETF and hold long positions in various securities, potentially including those mentioned in this video. However, I have no relationship to any issuers other than Hack, nor am I presently acting as a market maker.